there's so much to be said about identity. And there's so much to be said about where you see yourself in your relationship with your spouse. There's no way a marriage can work successfully remaining monogamous, staying truthful to one another through good times and bad times without having the vertical covenant of Christ, without having the vertical covenant of God to rely on, there's times that you don't trust your spouse. There's times your spouse doesn't trust you. There's uncertainties and and all that we have is, is faith and, and trust and communication. These things that we work with each other on daily in order to better understand each other's lives so that we can live harmoniously together when you fight you fight to stay together because you're interested in fixing whatever burr is not grinding correctly in your gears as they turn a relationship is is two people coming together as one flesh and it's not a, a matter of my wife fixing my inconsistencies or me feeling her edges and, and you know making her complete where she is falling short it's actually the opposite from what I've learned your spouse will actually illuminate a lot of your faults and will actually bring to light and, and magnify a lot of your most undesirable traits and the only way you can get inside yourself to flush those is having someone else to help you through that. You cannot do it on your own. People call me weak for needing Christ. I 1000% beg to differ. What I understand <clears throat> is people want credit. If you produce the CD, you want your name on it. You want credit for it, you produce that CD. Justin Bieber has a name. When Justin Bieber is on set, whether he's doing a commercial or a photo shoot, he's the man. Every other person on set, my the producers, the directors, the client, but the lighting person, the person in charge of art, the person in charge of wardrobe, the person in charge of hair and makeup, uh, maybe the stunt double, pretty much every other single person on set makes about the same money. And it's just as important as one another. The actor, the key person, the Justin Bieber, he gets paid a lot because of his name, because of his identity, because of who he is. So that can be very heavy, you know, a lot of autographs, a lot of pictures, a lot of people throwing themselves at you, throwing random things at you, thinking that just by being near you that they're going to come up. It's strange if you've ever been on set, if you've ever done a commercial with a, with a high paid actor, you understand fully. So I got to tell you that without having Christ as your backbone, without having Christ as your ability to lean when you get weak, to lean on when you get weak, to lean on when you don't really have the strength to say no, but you're saying no for Christ. It's, it's, it's the same thing as the ego of, well, I produced that CD, my name should be on it. Christ wants credit too. So the people that choose to not give Christ credit are very hypocritical because they deserve credit in their opinion. They deserve their ability to be known for their greatness, whatever it is that they do. And that's where their identity lies. And it's a really interesting concept in that really it just comes down to the ego and what separates you from Christ. People know that there is God. People know that there is a greater God out there that created all of this. People 
don't truly believe in evolution. They know that it doesn't make sense once they get down into it. And all the brightest scientists are starting to understand that the Big Bang Theory makes the greatest, most amount of sense. So all the books of religion agree to the person of Jesus walking this earth. And here's where we have a discrepancy. All these things make sense, but only few want to give Christ credit for the death on the cross and the resurrection three days later. Ah, it's just too much to believe. People just can't handle that. Well, God could have made it easy, and he could have forced us to believe, but rather, that's what God chose. Your ego can choose to not believe. Your ego can choose to believe. If the world ended tomorrow, we all died tomorrow, and this Jesus thing wasn't real, joke's on me, we're all dead. We all die tomorrow, world ends tomorrow, and this Jesus thing is 1,000% real. Because I've chosen to admit, yes, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Yes, you died on the cross and you raised from death three days later, <clears throat> defeating death, hell, and the grave. I put my trust, I put my faith, I put my love in you, Christ. My hands are your hands. This rock and roll rooster show. What I'm saying is, if you don't have the ability to give Christ that honor, that title, because he wrote this CD, because he made this picture, because he made this movie, that's all on you. That's your choice. That's your ego. That's your problem. Give credit where credit is due. Yes, yes, Christ wants credit. But he's not going to invade. He's not going to force it from you. That's why we have free will. You have to dig deep inside yourself. I'm one of the most fortunate men to live, first of all, in one of the greatest countries in the world, be married to <laughs> a woman that's one out of 7.6 billion, world's most beautiful, loving, caring, tender woman that's ever been born on the face of this planet, who blessed me and her with two wonderful kids who we at times find ourselves laughing that our cheeks hurt from smiling and laughing so much in the day. We realize that money is just something that God provides for the needs that are always met and occasionally for things of the heart that we desire as they see fit in God's plan. I feel so lucky to be first a husband and second a father and I feel so lucky that when people meet me that's the first thing they hear out of my mouth is that I'm a husband I'm a father I might be a stuntman today I might be a carpenter tomorrow I might be an auto detailer the next day but no matter where I am no matter what I'm doing people know right away that I'm a husband I'm a father and given the opportunity I'm a believer in Christ I try not to rub in people's faces, but I do look forward for the opportunity to help people better understand that we all struggle from the God-sized hole in our hearts, and that until I myself could really kind of put a place to it, a turn to it, a, an understanding to the fact that no matter what I try to put in my God-sized hole in my heart, it would never be satisfied until I filled it with God. I started understanding and knowing God and began a relationship. Excuse me. Plenty of people go to church that don't know God. Plenty of people as I'm one of them are hypocritical and give God a bad name. All we can do is forgive one another. All we can do is research for ourselves. Never take, never take someone else's word for it. You gotta dig into it for yourself. And what I've learned for myself is that there's a lot of religious books out there, but only one has prophecy. 
Only one speaks of things in the future that have come true. And that's the Bible. And every person that's tried to debunk the Bible has been proven wrong themselves. In all actuality, most of them become believers in Christ in turn. So when you walk on the shoulders of the brightest minds who have tried to debunk this, that, or the other, and you learn from them and you realize statistically the likelihood that a man, if Jesus wasn't a God, if he was supposed to be just a man, if he was just a man and predicted just eight, eight of the life events, meaning where he was born, what he was going to do, how he walked through this place on this day, what, when he was going to die, how he was going to die, the various things, <clears throat> let's, just, let's just take eight of them that Jesus predicted in his life. Now, he predicted more than a couple hundred prophecies that came true, but regardless of fact, let's just use eight for the sake of math. I'm going to blindfold you. I'm going to drop you from a helicopter into the state of Texas somewhere. And the state of Texas is going to be three foot deep with silver dollars. One of them is going to be marked with a red X somewhere. The probability, the likelihood of you finding that silver dollar with a red X in the state of Texas is the likelihood a man could come up with just eight of the events in his life beforehand, as Jesus did. So if that's not divine, tell me what is. <clears throat> so I believe Jesus was God, and I believe Jesus died on the cross, but he didn't stay dead. I believe he rose again, because that's what the book said. And nothing in the book has ever been proven wrong. Nothing. So we live off of faith, and by grace alone, we, we have admitted it's into heaven. And the best way I understand it is this. I'm in Vegas. A lot of VIP, nightclub. Hey man, get you on the VIP. Hey man, you know, show up to the show up to the show up to the gates and I'll get you in. You know, just tell them my name. <clears throat> We're real used to that. So I want you to understand it like this. You die. You go through this weird something between here and, and, and heaven. And you get stopped at a gate. You get stopped at some sort of judgment. And as God says, Hey, Jesus come running up. Hey, Dad, Dad, Dad. It's cool. He's with me. And, and, and God just unclicks the, 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 you know, the rope. And you go on with Jesus. That's the, a modern day illustration. But just know that the relationship you share with Christ is your direct admin to heaven as your direct admittance. That's, that's, that's how you get in. There's no other way. There's no works. There's nothing you can do. If there were, we'd be doing it, right? So no works can get you in. So that busts up a whole bunch of other religions. Doesn't matter how many shirts you wear, doesn't matter, no matter how many wives you think you get or can have, dog, it has nothing to do with what you can do. It has everything to do with Christ dying on the cross and defeating death, hell, and the grave three days later. There's a lot that you can learn in the book. I suggest you read it. But the only way your marriage is going to be successful is when you have the fear of God beating into your heart, helping you not cheat. When you have the fear of God beating into your heart, to do the right thing when no one's watching because God is always watching and that's God's daughter if it's your wife it's your wife that's the mother of your kids not the most important most awe-inspiring person in my world is my wife and I treat her that way stupid things that I can do for her I do put gas in her car leave her a little note Touch her, grab her, hug her, kiss her, look her in the eyes, tell her you love her. Cook, clean. If you have idle time, do something. Show her that you're doing something. 
It's not hard. She'll do absolutely everything for you. Everything for you that you've ever wanted, that you've ever dreamed of. That's, that's a real marriage. That's a real partnership. I, we would give anything for each other. It's like we have this bulletproof vest on everywhere we go. It's Christ. It's our armor. Not without earning and, and, and trying and sacrificing. Not without learning. Not without a burning desire to want to please each other, please Christ, honor Christ in all things that we do. If it doesn't honor Christ, we don't do it. It's that simple. We, we desire to change, conform to the image of Christ because it's the same reason we gave up stupid stuff in our past when we got married. It's because we choose to be one flesh. We choose this way of life and we know it's better. And lo and behold, over time, you change. What used to taste good doesn't taste good no more. What used to look normal no longer looks normal. I wish people knew more about Christ.